Aha! This is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the things you need. Our first base layer is Blood River Flash. I use a dry brush to apply the paint faster. I prefer this way because you don't have to be gentle and watch out for your brush's tip. It's especially handy when you paint the skin between the armor panels on the tail, because you can apply the paint easily. You don't have to be super neat and tidy with this layer. The only thing you need to look out for is avoiding the crevices of the skin. Then I glazed over the whole skin, including the crevices, but I did not let the paint pull in those little recesses. We just need a tiny bit of paint there, so the skin would look a bit smoother. I mixed some Rackard Flesh to the Blood River Flesh. I chose this color because I wanted a pale looking skin for the ghoul and I think Rackard Flesh is a good foundation for that. I'm sketching the highlights on the muscles top part and increasing the size of them mostly on the torso. If you want to be a pro Instagram painter you obviously do just one side for the highlights but it would look nicer on the gaming table if you highlight both sides. I'm blending and sketching these parts at the same time with thin layers of paint. Now with pure Rackard Flesh, I decrease the highlight areas and focus on the top part of the muscles, but Papa Laborts, how do you know where to put those highlights? I just took some photos you guys, so those pictures can guide my hands and I highly encourage you to do the same. Then I glaze over the Rackard Flesh layer to make it silky smooth like Granny's butt cheek. For the final highlight of the skin, Papa Laborts applied some grey sear. Uh, you'd like to do that moderately. This will make the skin more high contrast and works great for pale skin. I build up the opacity with thin layers so I don't have to glaze after this step. Then I glaze over the Rackard Flesh layer to make it silky smooth like Granny's butt cheek. For the final highlight of the skin, Papa Laborts applied some grey sear. Uh, you'd like to do that moderately. This will make the skin more high contrast and works great for pale skin. I build up the opacity with thin layers so I don't have to glaze after this step. After that I cover all the blisters on its body with mechanical standard grey. On the box art they look like some hard rocky blisters. Uh, I could be wrong but I'm gonna paint them that way. Use base layer consistency so you will only need one coat of paint. Then I go back to Rackard Flesh and create a small dot or spot on the top part of these blisters so they become nice and shiny like Granny's denture. Now with the skin done, I paint those bandages wrapped around his limbs. I use Bane Blade Brown and try to avoid letting the paint go into the crevices. You need those nice black lines for definition. To make these bandages look more old and rough, I apply some soft tone wash. This has some yellow in it, so it makes sense that these clothes are old and dirty, because probably no one cares about changing the bandages on a ghoul. After the wash dries, I go back with Bane Bread Brown and start highlight the upper part of the cloth. Use stain layer so the transition from the wash will be smooth. Again, watch out for the crevices you guys or I slap on your tiny hands. To increase the contrast of these bandages, I go in with Ushapti Bone and do some edge highlights as well to increase the definition. 
I use thin layers so I build up the opacity slowly to have a nice gradient. Do not highlight the bottom part of these bandages because that's just Mickey Mouse so try to avoid anything as such. Now for the stone armor, which by the way makes me wonder how much faster and deadlier this creature would be without it. Or maybe the armor is part of the demonic theme and uh, he would die without it, I don't know. But I covered the whole thing with Nocturne Green and started to sketch out the highlights with a one to one mixture of Mechanicus Standard Grey and Nurkling Green. I use my highlight reference photos again to know where to put the highlights. Now these uh, Maya looking armor panels have some ornaments on them. Try to paint around them so these little details won't disappear and you don't need to blackline uh, to get them back. Oh and guys, use stippling. Like a lot. As you see I barely apply stippling here because I was fixated on highlight placement but later I realized that it's crucial to have a nice stone texture. This is a time consuming part because the armor has lots of sides thanks to these uh, cube like shapes but take your time because stone is a fun thing to paint. So as I said I went back and stippled the hell out of this stone armor. This will be our main blending technique to have a rough and coarse stone texture and as you can see it works nicely. If you watched any previous video of Papa Labords, there are going to be some glazing as well. This is purely optional. So you will have nice results without glazing, but Papa Labords can't help himself and uh, must glaze a bit. Now let's add some more Nurgling Green to our mixture and continue the process while gradually decreasing the highlight areas. Same stippling motion. You don't have to create super tiny dots while stippling. You will be fine with larger spots too because you will still create texture for the stone and uh, stones have this kind of look if you look at some uh, reference photos. It's interesting that this ghoul has this Maya style armor. The game tries to blend in lots of ancient gods. Like obviously the big angels are based on Christianity but we got Hades from the Greek gods and the Valkyrie for some Norse variation and uh, the list goes on. Well, Valkyries are basically not gods but uh, you get what I'm saying. I really like that because for some strange reason it fits well with the theme. Oh by the way guys, I never really know the difference between ghoul and zombie so I looked it up. So the main difference is that a zombie was a human who died and then became undead, but a ghoul is a demon who eats human flesh and likes to roam nearby cemeteries. So I guess they are okay if the flesh is not uh, so fresh after all. Anyway, I thought it's an interesting little piece of fantasy lore. Now use pure nurgling green and reduce those highlight areas even more. Pick out those little ornaments on the armor, especially the flat ones with this color, so they will stand out more. Stipple all the way. You don't have to stay in just the nurgling green layer because you can have some bright dots in the darker part as well. It's only going to increase the textured feel to the stone, so it's a fun process. Experiment with it a bit. Remember guys, this is stone, not metal. It's not a reflective and not as smooth. You can paint it like that if you want a shiny enamel. Uh, that would look great on this guy as well, but uh, from the cracks on the surface we can tell that's uh, not the case here. Oh and by the way guys, if you followed Papa Laborts' tutorial, please send the results to me like this gentleman. I really like to see how your minis look, okay? Okay. Let's add some grey here to our Nurgling Green for our final highlights. As you see, I tried to create the focal point around the ghoul's head. To do that you just need to create bigger and brighter highlight areas closer to the head. Also do some edge highlights with this color to add some extra layers to that concept. With the armor done, 
Let's paint the teeth with Rackard Flash. It's a bit tricky to tell where one tooth ends and where the other starts, but I'm sure you can figure it out. We paint the teeth now, so we don't stain our tongue uh, tentacles uh, later. Speaking of which, let's cover those things with Baraknar Burgundy. Try to watch out for the teeth, or I'll slap on your tiny hand. Now let's go back to the teeth and cover them with a thin coat of soft tone. Because let's face it, this is not a toothpaste commercial, and this guy probably don't wash his teeth uh, twice a day. So let's make it a bit uh, dirtier. After that, mix some sunny skin tone to the Baraknar Burgundy and sketch out the highlights on those tentacles. Use the photos for reference and try to apply the paint in sections. I'm blending and applying the layers at the same step, pulling the paint from the dark areas to the bright parts. It's uh, basically glazing but with a bit more heavier layers. Then add some more sunny skin tone to the mix and try to highlight with little spots like we did on the armor and don't connect them too much. Put more spots where you want to increase the contrast the most. You can glaze over them if you want the layers to be smoother too. Lastly, go in with pure sunny skin tone with some really tiny dots. This will sell the effect that these tentacles are shiny and slimy just like Granny's oxtail jelly. Ok guys, last section. The eyes. Cover the eyes with ivory and then use Vallejo's fluorescent orange. You need a couple of layers because this paint is very translucent, but the result will be very nice. We will do a super simple OSL around the eyes, glazing this color on the nearby armor panels. As you see, I glaze it around the eyes a bit too, to increase the glowing effect, but only like two or three layers. You need a lot more layers on the right angled armor, uh, around the eyes to achieve a similar effect, and also add a bit to the nearby tentacle too. So this way the ghoul's eyes will glow nicely. And that's it you guys. The ghoul is ready to feast on some dead bodies in the dungeon. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my patrons who support this kind of videos. With a special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Dominic Wrightman, trying to paint my eyes, and Jonathan Mausner. If you want to support the work of Papa Labortz, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next day. Now, I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.